También somos afortunados. We are fortunate because some very sharp minds have the privilege of witnessing all of these phenomena. The scholastics of the Spanish Golden Age. The scholastics were almost all professors of theology, philosophy or law. And their activity centered around the University of Salamanca, Coimbra and the surrounding areas. These were the first scientists to theorize about what was happening. One of my own humble offerings I am most proud of is the in-depth analysis of the contributions the scholastics of the Spanish Golden Age made to banking theory. Finally, in short, one reaches the conclusion that they were, to a large extent, forerunners of the Austrian School of Economics. Let us take a brief look at the contributions of primarily these thinkers, who had, so to speak, divided themselves into two schools, which I believe can be clearly distinguished and somehow foreshadow what would, in 19th century England, that is, 300 years later, be called the currency school and the banking school. These thinkers made some vitally important contributions, many of which were tragically forgotten and were not rediscovered by economic theorists until three or four centuries later. Let us briefly consider them. We will begin with Luis Saravia de la Calle, who was the author of a book which has the merit of having been written in Spanish. It is called Instrucción de Mercaderas, and it was published in Medina del Campo in the year 1544. Well, the book is a mixed bag. As one would expect, one part is highly critical of usury. But the chapter devoted to bankers is a little jewel, as is the chapter devoted to the analysis of prices. What determines prices? Are prices determined by costs, or is it the other way around? Saravia de la Calle concludes that the relationship between costs and prices is the opposite of what people usually think. He says that costs do not determine prices. He writes that those who measure the just price by the labor, costs and risk incurred by the person who deals in the merchandise or produces it are greatly in error for the just price arises from the abundance or scarcity of goods, merchants and money. Subjective valuations determine the price, and entrepreneurs are willing to take on costs accordingly, to produce goods they hope to sell at a profit. Costs follow prices, and not the reverse. Now for another enormously valuable contribution from Luis Saravia de la Calle, who is very tough on bankers. He calls bankers voracious gluttons who swallow everything, destroy everything, confuse everything, steal and soil everything, like the harpies of Phineas. He says bankers go out into the street and square with their table and chair and cash box and book. To be a banker, one needed only go out into the street, stand in the street, with a chair, a table, remember trapeza, a cash box and a book, like harlots to the brothel with their chair, as Saravia de la Calle puts it. With perfectly sensible legal reasoning, he points out that interest is incompatible with the nature of the monetary deposit, since in any case, a customer who hands money over for safekeeping is the one who must pay something. He owes the custodian something for doing the job. According to Saravia de la Calle, if we receive interest from a banker, the transaction we are making is not a deposit. We are implicitly accepting that the banker will lend the money. And a loan contract differs radically from a deposit contract. Notice how our author reasons. He says a person who acts in this way is committing a sin, and thus, if it is warranted, the person will go to hell. In fact, Saravia de la Calle writes, he who deposits his money with someone he knows will not guard it, but will spend it, is not free from sin, at least venial sin. He acts as one who turns over a virgin to a lecher, or a delicacy to a glutton. Listen, depositor, do not be a fool. If you deposit your money and you receive interest in return, do not pretend you do not understand. 
do not look the other way, because it would be impossible for the banker to pay you anything if he were not appropriating part of your money and lending it. It is no good to say, no, no, I deposited it. And then when you go ask for the money, if it is gone, you cry and scream and even tear your hair out. Because ultimately, you are the main culprit, since you look the other way. It is as if I left the virtue of my daughter in the hands of a bodyguard for safekeeping and later told him, but put her to work because I need you to pay me a thousand euros a day and I looked the other way. If later I found that he had prostituted her, I would be the main culprit for having turned over a virgin to a lecher. It would be like giving a rich honey cake to a small child and saying, here, take this cake and watch it for me, and then looking the other way. Well, it would last as long as a cake at the door of a school, as we say in Spanish, because children have quite a sweet tooth and would not be able to resist the temptation. So the doctrine of Saravia de la Calle is abundantly clear, and he presents it with plenty of charm and ingenuity. Also, he closely follows the theoretical developments of jurisprudence, which we considered when we looked at the era of the Roman jurist consults. Saravia de la Calle also highlights the huge profits obtained by private bankers. Note what he says. He says the depositor should pay the banker a modest and moderate wage. And yet, not only do bankers not receive a wage, but they pay interest. And furthermore, they make huge amounts of money. How is this possible? Because they appropriate deposits and do business with the money, putting it into all sorts of activities. He writes, if you receive a wage, it should be moderate and adequate for your support, not the excessive loot with which you build superb houses, buy lavish estates, pay servants and provide extravagant luxuries for your families, and you give great feasts and dress so splendidly, especially when you were poor before you began your dealings and you left humble trades. How can it be that bankers start off poor and in a very short time they become millionaires? Moreover, he develops an incipient theory of the cycle, since he explains that bankers generate artificial expansion that sooner or later ruins everything. He makes a criticism. He says that as a result of the activity of bankers, people buy as if there were more money than there actually is. He writes, as is common knowledge, these moneylenders are the beginning, occasion and even the cause of all this. Because if they did not exist, each person would use his money to the extent he could and no more, and things would cost what they are worth, and more than a fair cash price would not be charged. Saravia de la Calle realizes that fractional reserve banking multiplies means of payment, pushes up prices, and therefore distorts the just price. People are willing to pay far more than they really would have paid in the absence of a fractional reserve banking system.